You're welcome to another episode of Fertility Talk with Olarunke Tadios. How are you doing? Okay, last week I discussed IVF and what you need to know about IVF. On today's episode, I will be discussing IUI. IUI means intrauterine insemination. Okay, so what you need to know about IUI. Who should go for IUI? Does it work at all? You know? Can you get pregnant with it? Is the chances higher than that of IVF? Okay, so let's get down to, to it, okay? So IUI is another type of um, artificial insemination, okay? It's a procedure usually that can be done if there is infertility, okay? And um, on this part, that it, when, once the infertility, especially once it borders on unexplained infertility okay unexplained infertility is an infertility where you know um the inserting mother has no fertility issues after a comprehensive evaluation the results all comes out you know fine okay there was no reason why she she is not getting pregnant and also for that of the of the male he has done all his semen check, he has done all his infection screening, and everything is fine. So, technically, there is no reason why both of them should not get pregnant. But for an unexplained reason, pregnancy is not just happening. You see, this, this type of couple, you know, should go and they, they in fact, they are the first candidates for IUI, okay? So what happens is that in IUI, um, the sperm will be washed and, you know, will be placed directly around the time of the woman's ovulation when she will release her eggs, you know, the sperm will be put in there. And, you know, with the hope that um, the outcome would be good, you know, that with the hope that the sperm should be able to swim into the fallopian tube and fertilize the egg and resulting into pregnancy okay so that's the main aim of doing IUI okay so with IUI the sperm can be placed directly uh, into the womb and you know and the sperm you know should have the capacity to move and swim um, to meet the the hex so everything must be fine for both couples before IUI um, can be can be done or is advised okay like I explained earlier on is usually advised you do IUI if there is no reason um, for your infertility after a comprehensive check, okay? Like I said, the sperm is placed inside the womb and um, that means that if there is a blockage of the tubes, you know, you shouldn't do IUI because there will be no roots for the sperm to go through, okay? So um, if you have a tuba, blockage you are not a candidate for IUI okay the beautiful thing about IUI is that it can be coordinated with your normal cycle okay although with medications now you know and um, why IUI is done on also in many factors apart from couples with unexplained infertility a single lady might opt for IUI that is the truth okay we are now in this era where there are a lot of single ladies who truly wish to be married, but uh, for one reason or the other, um, the men are not just coming, okay? So they could opt for IUI using a donor sperm, okay? So um, they will go through this process using, the, using a donor sperm to, to achieve pregnancy. So this is also one of the reasons why IUI is done, okay? So the sperm or the specimen are obtained from a standard lab and thawed before the, you know, IUI process, okay? Also, women with endometriosis-related infertility, you know, because IUI involves you using drugs and these drugs will help your eggs, will help your follicles to grow very well. So you could do IUI, you know, um, when if you have an, um, endometriosis, you know, because of the medications, it helps your head, okay? So you could also do IUI if um, you have male factor infertility. 
So you could also do IUI if you have a male factor infertility, like sub, I'll call it sub fertility. After your semen analysis, one of the first step is for, for male, for uh, infertility check is to assess the sperm. And you know, um, if the sperm is below average or is weak or there is a weak movement or, you know, um, abnormality in sperm size or shape, that's morphology, you know, IUI could also help um, in some extent, especially if, if it has mild motility issue because the sperm is jumped straight or dumped straight into the into the womb so um it has at least crossed we've reduced the distance yes there is a reduction in distance now okay so it could help men with mild um uh, motility issues okay to you know to actually impregnate their wife we might want to explore iui if you have mild motility issues okay with your sperm Another reason why, you know, IUI might be recommended for you is if you have cervical factor infertility. Um, usually your cervix is the opening, okay, between your vagina and the uterus. Usually mucus are produced by the cervix around the time of your ovulation, you know, and, you know, it provides um, an ideal environment for the sperm to travel from your vagina to the fallopian tube. But if your cervical mucus is too thick then it may impede the sperm's journey okay it may slow it down the cervix itself may prevent the sperm from reaching the the egg okay scarring also could be there and uh, you know all this would prevent the sperm to to actually reach its destination so iui might be needed to bypass such orders, okay? So, because like I said, IUI is depositing the sperm right into the womb and, you know, it's to increase the chances of um, sperm meeting the egg, you know, on time. Another reason you, you could also decide to do IUI has to, has to do with ovulatory factor, okay? When you have problem with your ovulation, maybe you are PTOS or for whatever reason you have problem with your ovulation, um, you might consider IUI because um, IUI, with IUI, some drugs, some fertility drugs would definitely be given to you and, you know, your cycles is well regulated and you, the doctor can tell that you would ovulate at this point in time. So you could do IUI. So what's the difference between IUI and time intercourse? Okay, almost still the same process, but it's just that in the case of IUI, the sperm will be washed in, um, um, placed into your into your womb by the doctor, right in the doctor's office. It's not a theater procedure. But for the time intercourse, you just need to go home and have sex with your husband. Okay, so that's just the only, that's the difference between um, um, IUI and timed intercourse. Another reason why IUI may be advised is when you have semen allergies. Have you heard about that? Semen allergy, you know, some women just react to, to semen. Um, to, their, to, to such women, the sperm will cause redness, itching, you know, um the the redness the, there is a burning sensation there is a swelling on their skin okay so if if you're such women okay you would you might need to consider doing iui because you know even with a condom um a condom would have been advised but you know most of this condom kills sperm cell and um and because i have Procedure helps to remove the protein from the from the from the semen, so it has it would help to reduce all those um, all those um, symptoms you you might be having with semen allergies. Okay, and um, so it's actually a good m method of if, or technique for you to get pregnant if you if you have semen allergies. Okay, so the next question is: Is there any risk associated with um, IUI? Is there any risk? Okay, is there risk? As far as I'm concerned, every procedure has, you know, from mild to severe risk. But for IUI, I would say very mild, very mild risk of infection because of um, the instrument or the catheter that will be 
put into you, but at least, you know, you could um, use antibiotics after. There is potting, there is the possibility of you spotting in the process of placing the catheter. You, you could experience some amounts of uh, spotting, you know. So apart from this, I don't really see any other, um, you know, any other major risk. And of course, because it's IU high, and drugs, fertility drugs are used very likely also that you might you might uh, end up having multiple high multiples pregnancy. OK, so all these are just um, the risk that you could be aware of um, doing IUI. You might also want to know how to produce sperm for this procedure. You will need to masturbate for for you to produce sperm for this procedure, okay? I think that's just about IU high. It's not a risky procedure, I have explained to you. So let's talk about the success rates though. IU high success rate is lower than that of IVF, meaning that IVF success rate is higher than that of IUI, okay? So um, if you are after success, then um, of course I know you are after the success. You might want to consider doing IVF because IVF success rate is higher than IUI. IUI success rate is just like 20% and um, yeah, you can have your IVF success rate. So in some centers, you can have it 50-50. In places like ours, you could have it as 80%, you know. So um, in terms of success rates, IVF is better than, than IUI. So that's just everything you need to know, basically from my hand on IUI, okay? Thank you for watching today's episode of Fertility Talk with Olarun Ketadios. I hope you've learned something, okay? For more inquiries or for consultation, kindly call the number showing on your screen. And if you want to book an appointment with us, you can as well call the number showing on your screen, okay? Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share the video as well. Thank you and God bless.